Yes, they pay every tax dollar they owe, but they also have all these billions overseas, right, Secretary Lou? So what do you do to change the tax code to enable all of those companies, Apple included, to bring some of those billions back to the U.S.? You know, Maria, we have a broken business tax code, and I think that's something that we have recognized for years and proposed tax reform, and Republicans have recognized for years. I hope we can sit down and work together on a bipartisan basis to deal with this. We have so many d loopholes and deductions that we have a, d effect, a, a statutory tax rate that's the highest in the developed world. Our average tax rate is not. But if you're a firm that isn't taking advantage of the loopholes and deductions, you have a statutory rate that tells you keep your money out, defer your income, uh, and, and, and that's what companies are doing. It's leading to things like inversions, which I think are terrible. A company that changes its legal address just to avoid paying taxes in a country that creates its market, its technology, gives it the infrastructure and the people it needs. I think we need to reform our tax code. Uh, we need to do it in a way that doesn't increase the deficit. We ha have just had a tax bill that you know, has, has taken care of some things uh, that were part of it, that we're going to have to take that into account as we go forward. Um, I hope that there is a real opportunity in the new year to take this on. I hope we don't have to see stories about inversions in coming years. Yeah. We've taken administrative action to stop inversions as best we can, and we're looking at more things we can do. But we have to change our tax code, shut the door to inversions, and fix a broken tax code. Well, that's the thing. I mean, people are saying, look, why are you coming out with more regulation around inversions? Just change the tax code. And that way, well, <laughs> we're about to lose Pfizer to Allegan. You know, we had the CEO well, of Allegan on the other day, Secretary Liu, and he said that they, they, they pay 14%, but at closer look, they pay 4% in taxes because they could. What, what, what we uh, can do on our own is administrative action, but I've said from the start we can't solve the problem through administrative action. Only legislation can solve the problem. I had extensive discussions over the last year with Republicans as well as Democrats. I think that there is the potential for a meeting of the minds if there's the will to find it. Um, and I hope we, we get there. I, I think we had a meeting of the minds last week, certainly, when that budget bill passed, because a lot of people got what they wanted. Let's get to the entitlements and retirement, Secretary Liu, because you had a great op-ed about why it's so important for Americans to come up with their own retirement plan, given the fact that, you know, things like Social Security, pensions, they're running toward insolvency. Give us your take on financial resolutions and what people need to be thinking about as they go into the new year, Secretary Liu. First of all, people, I think, should rely on Social Security because it's going to be there for them. Under the worst scenarios, it's 75 percent funded. And I think that we need to have a bipartisan conversation outside of the kind of fiery debate and figure out how to solve the rest of the problem. But people shouldn't panic about Social Security. The problem is Social Security was never intended to be a sole source of retirement income. It was always thought of as part of a pension, savings, and Social Security. Now, we know that uh, people are seeing less and less uh, kind of defined benefit pension plans in their, uh, in their compensation. That puts all the more importance on saving for retirement. And the people who have the most trouble saving are people who are at firms that don't offer things like 401Ks, people who are kind of at the start of their career or at modest incomes. What we did, uh, which I think is a really important innovation, is we started something called MyRA. MyRA is a simple, safe, and affordable way for people to get started saving for retirement. You can put away as little as $5 a pay period and see how that adds up over time. All you have to do is go to MyRA.gov. You're putting your retirement savings in the safest investment possible, U.S. Treasury Securities. You're going to see that it is something that if you start, you can do more. So the habit of saving builds on itself. And I think the end of the year is a perfect time for people to take a look. Go to MyRA.gov, and as you make your New Year's resolution, say, what am I going to do to provide security for myself and my family? And this is something you can do for yourself, and it only takes a few minutes. And, and you recommended, basically, look, you could, you, it's free. There's no fees, right? You go to MyRA.gov, no fees. And when you do get a little nest egg, if you're just putting RA $5, then ev eventually you could move that into, like, a Roth IRA or, or something else. Is that right? Correct. It's designed just like a Roth IRA. It has a limit of $15,000. If you hit $15,000, you can leave it there, or you can roll it over into a commercial Roth IRA. One of the things that uh, small investors know is uh, it's not so easy for them to open accounts with $5 a pay period. There are minimums. There are fees. My IRA gets rid of all that. There's no fee. There's no minimum. 
There's no hassle. You just sign on to MyRA.gov. You can do a one-time end-of-the-year contribution. You can do it by pay period. I think that uh, for people who have not started saving, it's a perfect way to begin. And it's something that I think we all need to talk about around our, our kitchen tables, about our holiday tables, because you know, it is something that we, we all hope uh, to get to the point where we are retired and uh, have a c comfortable, safe retirement. But this is the thing we can do to make that a reality, to be able to be ready. And the earlier you start, the better. And the end of the year is a great time to think about yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's true. And, and this administration came into office basically promising fiscal responsibility. So looking at the, the, the final year of the president uh, um, uh, uh, in, in office, ending with this as well is, is a real priority for you. I know that. And so it's a great idea. Secretary Liu, are you planning on staying throughout until the president ends his term? Maria, I come to work every day asking what can I do to help grow this economy, to create more opportunity for middle class Americans, and to make America safe in the world. Um, it is a privilege to serve. That is what I'm doing. So, okay, so then you're here till the end. You know, I, 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 I consider it a real privilege to be here every day. One of the things that, you know, worries people is the fact that when you go back to savings, they're not getting any money on their savings, right, Secretary? I mean, look at where we are in terms of interest rates. Rock bottom, you're not making any money in, in savings. Let me, let me ask you about that because we've got this search for yield, and as a result, a lot of investors have bought Puerto Rico. They're looking because they can't make any money on, 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 any, uh, on any of their money because of rates being at rock bottom. Now the new worry is that Puerto Rico defaults January 1, should they get a bailout, Secretary Lowe? Look, Puerto Rico has a terrible financial problem. Uh, they are essentially insolvent. They have $70 billion of debt. Uh, the debt needs to be restructured. We got a lot done at the end of the year, uh, but one of the things Congress didn't do is they didn't give Puerto Rico the ability uh, to restructure the way, say, Detroit did. Um, d Puerto Rico needs to sit down. It needs to work with all of the stakeholders to come up with a viable path forward so there can be an economic plan for the future. They're making cuts in their budget, they're raising taxes, but when you're insolvent, you need a restructuring. Uh, that requires legislation. We work closely with Puerto Rico. We're helping give them advice. We will continue to do that. But at the beginning of the year, Speaker Ryan has directed the committees in the House to take a look and to act on this. We are going to work with them. What they need is restructuring authority that covers all of their credit. I don't think anybody would be surprised if we saw a, de a default because we all know the position that they're in. Look, they're effectively in default. They've already been taking money out of pension funds to pay current bills. They've been shifting money that's dedicated to one creditor to pay another creditor. That is effectively default. Um, you, know, you, you don't have to wait until you miss a coupon payment yeah. to say you're in default. Now, they will probably end up missing coupon payments uh, because it's inevitable given what they've had to do to keep up. I can't tell you if that's January 1 or a later period, but what I can tell you is the first quarter of the year is an essential period of time for this to be addressed, and they need restructuring authority that covers all credit. Well, you're addressing all the important issues that our viewers care about. Treasury Secretary Jack Lew, thanks very much for joining us. We appreciate you spending the time on these important issues, sir. Good to be with you, Maria, and have a happy new year. And to you, happy new year, sir. Treasury Secretary Jack Lew. We'll